So here I am, Maryland Police Headquarters for Anne Arundel County. Yeah. One of the viewers was right. Apparently I can come in and get the uh, police report populated, uh, the final, you know, after the accident report. And apparently it does have the motorcyclist information. So thankfully I'm going to reach out to him and see what I can do to help. The phone call actually went really well. He's a really nice guy, and I'll do a breakdown of our conversation at the end of this video. He said he didn't mind me suing Oscar for not paying me as he promised he would, so I went to the Annapolis District Court to file a small claims court suit. I know some of you guys don't think I should be suing Oscar, and some of you think I just straight up can't win, but I think it'll teach him a lesson either way, and definitely make him think twice before putting anyone else into harm's way. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. So, I finally got a hold of the motorcyclist, thank God. Uh, one of the viewers had suggested, again, that I go to the police station and uh, look up the report, and I had to pay $5, and they printed out the full populated copy. It's the way the clerk worded it, uh, where they actually show the final, you know, information of, you know, where he went after the accident, who did what, who was suspected of drinking, all sorts of things. I'm going to censor everything in the police report here, and then I'll put it in uh, Imgur underneath, and I'll also put it at the end of the video, you know, five or six seconds a, a page. But that way you have that both at the end of the video and on Imgur in high definition. So that way you can read everything. Maybe it'll answer some more questions. I haven't read the full thing yet, but I uh, I do see it does, you know, break everything down kind of like I did. You see here with the uh, accident diagram. So uh, maybe it'll just confirm what I said or help you out in another way. But uh, the phone call went great. Uh, Robert's a really nice guy, and I felt awful. Uh, I called the phone number, and it was his dad who picked up. And then he said, tell you what, I'll give your cell number to uh, Robert, and if he wants to call, he will. And uh, I said, sure, that's fine. And he called right back, maybe two, three minutes. And uh, first thing I said is, hey, man, I know I'm coming right out of the blue with this, but I want to tell you I'm really sorry. Uh, I was the passenger in the car that hit you back uh, in March in that, that accident. And he said, oh, you were? There was two people? And I thought, oh, dear, because I'd gone to talk to him. I guess he didn't know who was what at that point, but... He mentioned that. And I said, hey, man, if there's absolutely anything I can do for you, let me know. Uh, you know I have made a little money now with the YouTube video. And obviously, you know, I've been working again. So uh, I said, hey, man, if there's any way I can make things easier for you, help you start to go fund me, anything like that, I'm more than happy to. And uh, he said that he was, was, was really appreciative of that. But what was kind of confusing to him is he said, you know, where's this coming from? I haven't met you in person. So there's got to be a catch here, right? He said, I don't want to be rude, but it seems a little fishy. And I said, hey, I completely understand. His worry was that he couldn't, um, if he accepts anything from me, then that might nullify his settlement from the insurance company. That could potentially be considered as an out-of-court settlement. I don't know if that is true or not. If you guys know, put that in the comments. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he was worried about doing anything at all or accepting anything at all until the end of his uh, settlement process, which he hasn't gotten yet. Uh, I broke it down to him what happened. I told him, you know, how I wasn't driving. I let this kid drive. I was honest with him about it. He hasn't even seen the video yet. I sent it to him after the call. But uh, he didn't text or anything. He was at work. But uh, I just told him, you know, I wasn't driving. I didn't know this kid personally, but I did. He did go on about the car and how much he loves it, and he knows a lot about him. And I let him go for a spin. I told him to turn around when it's safe and when he's ready. And uh, she said, every time I was explaining and every time I was giving details, he just came right back and said, hey, look, man, you weren't driving. Look, man, you weren't driving. And uh, I said, yeah, it's true, but I just want to tell, him, tell you how bad I feel. And he uh, and he understood, but he just said, you know, hey, this kid, this kid hit me, not you. But all I really want now at this point is uh, my hospital bills paid. He said, hey, I, I can't pay those, man, because, uh, you know, he's a working guy blue collar working guy and I respect that and he just you know the medical bills for just about anything of course any hospital visit are pretty high so uh, his lawyer's going to take care of it you know they front the money or whatever but um he just that was his big concern making sure that he doesn't do anything to interfere with his lawyer's work and that way he can uh he can take the uh the case forward get his settlement and then go from there uh he did say he's going to save my number and if he hears from his lawyer if there's anything I can do for him I even offered to buy him a tank of gas. That way it's not, you know, like an official gift or whatever. Um, and he said, no, he laughed and said, oh, I'll think about it, buddy. Don't worry. Just, uh, we'll just sit tight for now. So thankfully he was just really nice about it. I explained, the final thing I explained was that I am going to try to take this kid to court and uh, get a settlement. And I said, hey, I'll give you all of it if I can, whatever I get out of him. And then I said, I might not win, but I kind of want to do it to teach him a lesson. I'll get into that more later, but... 
I told him I just want to, it's something I feel prompted to do by a lot of my supporters, and uh, I think it's the right way to handle this on my end because I wasn't the driver, and uh, obviously he was driving as well. He was in a vehicle, so I'm kind of a third party who still lost a lot. And he said he totally understood. He said, hey, man, go for it. No problem. You know, as long as it doesn't interfere with my case, and I explained that it wouldn't. He said, that's fine. So he said, hey, you know, I, I got my lawyer doing my thing. You do your thing. And I said, all right, sure. So uh, he had to go back to work. So there's something was beeping in the back. I think he works in some kind of plant or something. But, yeah, so he went back to work, ended on good terms. He said, hey, sue him to your heart's content, you know, and uh, if, I, if I can accept anything, I will. But he didn't even want to make his own GoFundMe because he's worried about the uh, – implications with his case. So that's what I took away from that. Now on to the uh, injuries for the motorcyclist. Um, he, When he hit the car, apparently it compacted his left leg between the door and the, the bike itself, the frame of the bike. So that caused him a lot of pain, but there were no broken bones. And then when he went over the car, he landed on his right side like this and slid. So the side of his right leg had been scraped up and cut, I'm sure. But uh, nothing major and no uh, profuse bleeding. I didn't see any when I was there. And uh, it just, it, the scraping was there. And he said that's been long since healed. Um, he did say one of his toes is a little hard to bend. Uh, he said that when well, they did the x-rays and everything, there were no uh, broken bones, even though most of the time was looking for a head injury or a neck injury. But um, he mentioned that the toe was a little bit stiff. But my granddad, a doctor, he said there could be a hairline fracture or something minor. And uh, that could... Uh, that could be why his body is naturally, you know, swelling that area and that even on, on its own, it should heal just fine. But he is going to look into it. And I mentioned, you know, my granddad's office, you know, could look at it too. But he said it's not that big a deal, just that his leg hurt from the compacting pressure, even though it wasn't broken or no permanent damage and didn't break the skin. He just he felt that. And then when he went forward, he said that when he fell, he didn't feel any, his right leg's injury until he woke up because he apparently when he fell, he was out for a while. And I was too when the motorcycle's elbow hit my head, and he laughed about that. He said, oh, I got you back, huh? And we kind of laughed about that. But in short, he uh, <clears throat> had a concussion, scraped his leg, and uh, his other leg was compressed and bruised. But nothing was broken, at least not officially. And uh, he says he's, other than his toe, he's 100% back to normal. So we are really fortunate for him that, that he is doing better, and I'm really happy about that. So that's the update on the motorcyclist. Now to the court case. Um, my big thing is, is this kid lied. This kid crashed into a motorcyclist. This kid caused damage, damages to multiple pieces of property. This kid was reckless and irresponsible, and his actions caused, I, I bear a lot of responsibility as well, caused this accident. And he promised on, in, in text, in person, and on the phone, hey, I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay. He went from paying for all of it. Then I said, hey, just my deductible and the stuff that my insurance won't cover, even though my insurance didn't pay out that well, <laughs> to flat out saying, oh, my phone's bad, my phone's bad, and then just, you know, yep, not paying, no thanks, bye, and then having his insurance contact me. Uh, one person in the comments said that may have been his mom calling me because it was a female voice uh, saying not to contact him, and uh, maybe, who knows, I doubt it, but it was a nice little witty comment there. But the big thing is, is a lot of people have said, you know, I let him drive so I don't have a case. And that's very possibly true. But I think uh, going to court would teach him a lesson. Not that I'm, you know, an authority figure in that regard, but I want him to see that his actions have consequences. Because if I had known what his actions would lead to, I never would have let him drive. And I hope that this will kind of help him since he's new to driving. He wants to get into cars. He's talking about how he's an enthusiast. He knew the S2000 back to front. So he... Uh, and he knew, you know, driving manual is a big thing that enthusiasts are into, which is probably part of why he lied. So I think just showing him that, you know, his actions have consequences. If I get any money, whenever the motorcyclist is ready, I only have a few hundred bucks more to pay for the uh, the AP1 but to finish everything. But whatever I have left, I'm going to give right to Robert whenever he's ready. Uh, I did also mention that I'd love to have a video with him where we, you know, shake hands. I give him a check and I just, you know, he said he forgives me and that he's not mad. No apology necessary, but... I would like to show that, you know, he and I are good and uh, just kind of clear the air and just give him my best. But, uh, yeah, so as of right now, he's good. He's great. Um, but nothing can happen yet. My settlement, when I was hit by the drunk driver in the Accord crash, that was months. That was probably May or June. And I got hit in end of November. It was right before Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving Day. So, yeah, 
it's going to take a while longer. I, I'd probably say towards the end of the year, but uh, until then, I won't know. I do have his number. He has my number. He saved it, and we'll go from there later on. But uh, as of right now, he's good, but I, I want to make sure that this kid understands what it means to get behind the wheel of a car, especially a car that you're not capable of driving yourself. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm not trying to hurt him. I'm not trying to threaten him. I'm just, uh, you know, I think it's the right way to go. I think uh, he should see that and it should humble him. And whenever I get out of it, because again, he did, he did damage my property. I, I'll just top off whatever I need on my car, finish that up and give the rest right over to Robert. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys could share the original crash video, it really helps because I know a lot of people that have actually said, I'm not going to share my car anymore. I've had a lot of people that have said, you know, hey, I showed this to my son or my daughter who's just starting to drive and said, hey, this is encouraged her not to text and drive. So I think that the lesson is good there. Um, and again, whatever I get from this point, at least for the foreseeable future, I'm going to put aside to give to Robert. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I want to help him out any way I can, but I can't do anything yet. So. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate your support. If you could share, subscribe, whatever, it really helps. And I hope to turn this into something positive because, you know, Robert's an enthusiast. Uh, the kid pretended to be. And a lot of my friends that you've seen, like Kobe, the Miata owner, and Andrew, uh, they're really good guys. And I'd like to continue, which is my dream, is to have, you know, a car-themed channel and uh, to kind of share my love of cars with other people, but, you know, from the passenger seat. And uh, maybe eventually... If I can afford a exotic car, I'd love to work with the St. Jude Foundation and uh, drive kids around, you know, sick kids uh, post-COVID and safely, of course. But maybe be, be a part of that by sharing a cool car with some uh, some sick kids. I'd really, really enjoy that. So I know it's the third time I said it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.